Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to make another really awesome material with a couple of the textures found in my texture pack. There will be a link down in the description if you haven't picked that up already. Uh, so let's just jump straight into it. Grab a sphere out of the texture pack and just put it in the in the scene somewhere. And we'll just focus in on it like that. And then we'll go ahead and start making our material. So just, uh, there we go, material. Carbon fiber mat. Oh, and we'll open that up and then we'll drop some some textures into it so we're going to need a carbon fiber normal and we'll also need the carbon fiber mask this will get us started so we'll do some basic uv uh calculation so grab a texture coordinate node and we'll need a multiply node and then two scalars so we'll go UV tile X and UV tile Y. We to put these through an append vector so they get appended to the end of the of the values in our multiply node just like that and then we'll plug these straight into our UVs. Great and that sets up our UVs we'll just set these both to one so that they appear all right, and then we can get on making our carbon fiber pattern. So first off, we can just plug in our normals straight away. But for our mask, we're gonna have to perform a few different calculations. So we'll go out of the go out of the red node into a one minus, and come out of the green and the blue channels. I mean the the red and the green, red in a, green in blue, and we'll set up uh, some reflection values. So we're gonna need a vertex normal world space node. We'll need a reflection vector. Uh, yeah, that's the right one. And also a camera vector. So we'll get all of this lighting data. Uh, where is it? To handle how, uh, how reflections are treated in our material. <laughs> Let's crank up this, uh, this UV tile. Something like 50. Yeah, it could be a bit high. How about we go 25? All right, and we'll preview this reflect, uh, the reflection vector so we can see what kind of information we're getting there. The camera vector as well. So once we get the dot product of these two uh, values, we can multiply it by a power. So get our dot product node and a power node. That's a panna. <laughs> we need a power. Uh, set this to, let's say, six. Plug that into the dot product, then into a clamp just to bookend our values, and then we'll use that as the alpha. Then uh, we'll lerp together this one minus and the results of our lerp uh, into a Fresnel lerp. There's a bit more depth in the, in the material. So from the Fresnel, we'll need another power node, and we'll put that into another clamp. Just like that, we'll shift this away. And this clamp will be our alpha. After our lerp, we'll clamp again, just taking care of all our of, of our values, making sure nothing runs away. This will go into roughness. And then we'll get a constant for zero as the color. There we go. So that sets up our sort of basic carbon fiber base material. And from here we can add our clear coat. And to do that, we'll need to set our material here to use material attributes. And then the way that we combine these is with make material attribute nodes. And we'll use a mat layer blend standard. Uh, where are we? Mat layer blend standard. We'll plug that into our final little node there. And this as our, uh, as our carbon fiber pattern, once we get everything hooked back up, goes in our base material node. All right, so there's our, there is our carbon fiber effect. We can move on to the clear coat. So to get started, just duplicate this make material attributes node, because we'll start there and we'll need some more textures. So grab uh, two textures, we'll need some grunge. 
let's go with on the texture pack we'll get our grunge normal and grunge the grunge mask excellent and we'll also need a custom reflection vector this custom reflection vector needs to go into another text into another texture but this one's built into the engine uh, or in the starter content I think the epic courtyard daylight just type in HDR and you'll find it and then just plug in the custom reflection vector into the UVs from here we'll desaturate our, uh, our HDI scene HDR scene make a constant here for 0 0.1 just so that it's not totally black and white and then we can multiply that by a reflection amount we're making the scalar reflection amount and get a multiply we'll set our reflection amount to 0 0.5 for the time being hook it up to our multiply multiply it by our the result of our desaturation and this uh, can go straight into emissive alrighty then we'll do we'll do the grunge so come out of the grunge node with a minus one oh no a minus one, a one minus get mixed up and from our one minus we'll make a cheap contrast node let's just uh we'll have a look so just adding a little bit of contrast there to our to our grunge material so we'll stop previewing that we'll also grab some uv controls for our grunge uh we'll grab we'll grab these and just rename these for grunge grunge uvx let's copy that for simplicity and grunge uv y so we'll plug that into uvs and out of this cheap contrast node we'll go into a multiply it with another scalar this will be our grunge amount grunge amount into b cheap contrast into a and that will be our uh that'll be our roughness set our grunge amount to one and we'll preview this node so that we can see what's going on All right, so I don't know if it's coming through on the recording too well. If you can see there, in fact, I'll lower the UVs here so that it might be a bit more visible. So there's a, it's, it's a grungy sort of glassy, uh, glassy effect. Can't see that, just try it in engine. Looks pretty cool. Kind of like, uh, like weather beaten chrome. Okay, from there we're nearly done. Next up, lastly, is the normals. So we'll use the result of this multiply here, add it to the result of our normals uh, texture. So link those two UV controls. And we'll make a new multiply and a scalar for... Um, actually, we'll do this other way. We'll make a lerp, hold in three and click, and set blue to one in the three vector. Make that the A, make our normal the B, Hook up a scalar parameter, and this is our normal power. And we'll just preview this lab so that we can confirm that things are pointing the right way. All right, so one is maximum normal, which is what we want. And then the results of our lab uh, go into normals. Right, and then the way that we link them together, I mean, so that we can we can preview this. Have another look at the at the clear coat. See now it's now it's textured. I hope that's coming through in the in the recording. Anyway, we'll get to we'll get to the to the final material. So plug in the results from the clear coat into top material and as alpha, we need to copy this custom reflection vector and our texture. Uh, make yourself a multiply node and a lerp. We'll come out of the blue channel of our texture into A. Make a constant, set it at I want to say four, but we can dial this in later and plug it into B. Use the results of this as the alpha for a lerp. And we'll set these lerp values, another constant, uh, 1.5, and another constant at two. Plug them into A and B respectively. Then the results of this lerp go into a multiply, where we'll multiply a scalar, which will be our reflection amount. Reflection amount, just like that. And we'll set that to we'll set that to 0 
and we'll we'll adjust the values a bit so make another multiplier and a constant set this constant to a very low number like 0 0.05 Just like that, hook that up to the multiply, and then the result of this multiply go into the alpha of our layer blend. Then results, that's some very, very shiny, uh, shiny carbon fiber. But now we can save this and instance the material and tweak some values. So back in the editor, uh, click your material, right click it, create instance, drag the instance onto your sphere, and then open up the instance, and we can have a play with it and see what it's uh, see what's up. So we'll just activate all of these values. We can grunge it up. It's going to be a rather subtle effect. We can change the the amount that is reflect the that is reflecting with the clear coat effect over the top. Uh, what about the roughness of the carbon fiber. So there's no controls there, but we can add controls. So we'll just grab this chunk here, make a multiplier and a scalar. Then the scalar, uh, I'll just call it roughness power. Plug it into the multiplier, then into the clamp, and the multiplier goes to roughness. That's super shiny when we set it to one. Yeah, it'll be as rough as possible. So we can adjust values, you know, any way we like, add more scale up parameters to the to the final material. And then it's just a matter of getting uh, getting into the editor and playing around with it. So yeah, we can crank up the roughness, give that more sort of carbon fibery sort of feel. Ah, one more thing we can do is we can add a add a value to the contrast here. So Make a new scalar parameter, this one, grunge contrast. And plug it into the contrast input of the cheap contrast node. Set that to one. And then we'll check over our material. Well, we'll add a, I think the only thing we'll do is just add a minimum here to our clamp. So say 0 .3. Just so that it's not super super shiny in the in the final result then we'll hit save and we should be good to to have another look in the editor all right that, that's looking a lot better now uh so what else have we got here to play with grunge contrast i've made so many spelling errors here i'm so disappointed in myself <laughs> so we can up the contrast of the of the grunge it's a subtle effect there you can, you can see it a bit more clearly now there in the carbon fiber Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the end of the tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a pretty sweet effect using just, just a normal and, and, a, and a, a mask. So uh, if you'd like to follow along with these textures, check down in the description for the assets download. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, me again. Thanks for watching till the end of the video. I thought I'd let you all know that there is now a way to support the channel and get something in return. If you look down in the description of this video, you'll see a link to a Gumroad page where you can pick up a texture pack with over 30 high, 35 high quality normal maps and texture masks that you can use in Unreal Engine, in Game Dev, in any of your shader creation. We've got things like checker plate steel, some carbon fiber, bulging hex textures, some screws, bumps, dimples, all kinds of little greebly things that you can use to make shaders. And they're, they're really high resolution, and the meshes that I've included are also uh, quite high resolution. We've got some a sphere, a plane, a pill, and some other things that you can play around with. And you can use these to make, to make any sort of uh, material shaders that you like. They tiled perfectly, and they're all very high resolution, 1024 by 1024. Well, that's, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, everyone, for, for supporting me and what I do, and I'll see you all in the next video.